Hey guys, Jacob here. So, in this video, I have something really cool to show you. So, before I show it, I first want to explain that on bigger cubes, specifically 7x7 seven seven and bigger, notice how the outer layer is thicker than the inner layers. There is a reason it is designed that way, and it is so that when you turn the top layer 45 degrees, the corner doesn't completely overhang and therefore has a way to attach to the inside structure of the cube. Thus, a proportional 7x7 seven seven where they're all the same size isn't really possible, right? Or is it? Sorry, I had to do that. I like Vsauce. But anyway, uh, so this is my prototype of a perfectly proportional flat-sided 7x7. Seven seven. Now, the way I decided to go about doing it was, actually, I'll show you. Yep, I used elastic cords to hold the corners on. That way, when you do a turn, they bend out of place temporarily and then go back. So they kind of go up over these pieces and then back down. So I got this idea a while ago when I was trying to uh, trying to figure out different methods for big different mechanisms for big cubes that would allow for overhanging corners. And uh, this puzzle does work for the most part. I mean, it's fully functional technically. But there is one fatal flaw, and uh, I will show you. Yeah, because the corner stalks are elastic, when you do a, a top layer turn, the corners don't have anything to sit on when they're like this, and therefore flop downwards and get stuck. So, obviously the rest of the layer turns, but the corners are a bit of a problem. But I find... I find that I can just deal with this problem by kind of just kind of pulling the corners back into place just like that or just when you're doing a turn hold the corners in place this allows you to turn it and the corners not flop down so the layers under it of course aren't a problem except they're super catchy. Now, as far as turning quality goes, this puzzle turns like absolute crap. It is probably the worst turning puzzle I've ever made, but I don't really, I'm not really upset about that because this was more of an experiment than anything. I wanted to test the idea of flexible corner stalks just to see how well it would actually work. This method has been talked about online several years ago by other people, but I think I'm the only one who has actually tried it, that I know of at least. So, now I'm going to show you the pieces. So, I'm just going to take out a corner section. So this is what a corner looks like. As you can see, the base and block part of the corner are separate pieces that are connected by a short piece of elastic bracelet cord. This allows them to uh, kind of bend out of place during turns. So normally it'd be like that, but when it glides over these second layer pieces, the stalk does that, which allows it to overhang. So, um, yeah. This does work except for the fact that when you turn the top layer, the corners fall out of place. But they are physically attached to the puzzle, and therefore I think this does count as a fully functional proportional 7x7. Seven seven. Um, another idea I'm thinking about trying is 
instead of flexible stalks, I'm gonna have rigid stalks that can pivot. So what I'm thinking, instead of just connecting them with elastic string, I'm gonna take like a piece of a needle and at the base of the corner, there's gonna be like a, there's gonna be kind of a ball socket. And then I'm going to glue the needle into a small spherical bead that's gonna act as kind of the pivoting ball. And then I'm gonna have something similar in the block part. So that way it can move around like that, but it's not gonna flop out of place because these are the droopiest corners anyone has ever made. And it's kind of fun just to do that. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back together. Uh, I've been working on this project for the past few weeks and uh, I just now finished it. And uh, I figured this would make for a really interesting video. So while this puzzle doesn't work that great, it is still a really cool concept. I really like the way it looks, um, and I wonder if this, it, besides the corners falling out of place, if this would work for maybe an 8x8 or even a 9x9, because the idea of a fully proportional 9x9 especially is really cool to me, and I've always wanted one. It's only the one Tony Fisher made years ago was actually real but of course it's not um, but that's not a big deal I'm sure it will exist eventually so as I'm putting this back together there's one more thing I want to say and it's that the reason I decided to do this was because I recently found out about the X-Cube 7 that was made back in 2010, and uh, everyone online was trying to figure out how he did it, because it was, it wasn't, didn't have flexible corner sulks like mine did, his turned smoothly, no problem, and uh, was fully proportional, fully cubic, no tricks or anything. It was 100% real. I know that because he did a solve video on it. And, uh, yeah. Um, I'm gonna link that video in the description in case you want to check it out. Uh, it's really, really interesting. And the last thing I'm gonna do in this video is put this cube in the checkerboard pattern. And just a fair warning, that might take a few minutes because this... The turning quality of this puzzle is quite awful. find the best way to turn the top layers is by holding the corners like this and then just kind of kind of doing that <sighs> and I really wish the guy who made the X cube 7 would just show the mechanism because I feel like I feel like that could have revolutionized big cube mechanisms and have allowed for some insane looking puzzles that are properly proportioned because don't get me wrong the 7x7s we have today are are great but like can, can we just have one with even with um equally sized layers like I, I just feel like that'd be really cool and I'm pretty sure I speak for well over half the community when I say that all right almost done just one more turn all right finally so Yep, this is what it looks like in the checkerboard pattern. Looks absolutely just amazing. Um, 
this is going to look really good on my shelf. Um, and uh, here it is next to the uh, 50 millimeter 5x5 that I made uh, years ago. This one, as you can see, works a lot better. And I think this, the fact that the pieces are the same size also looks really cool. And uh, this cube is 70 millimeters, by the way. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. And each layer is 10 millimeters. So anyway, uh, that's going to conclude today's video. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing this experiment that I did and how it turned out. And uh, I will see you in the next video.